Welcome back to my channel I'm really happy for the support I got on my first video thank you all so much I really appreciate it now it's time to begin with part 2. Chapter 2. The Exorcist UNRENISHED. Thank you so much. Issei would yell, as he carefully closed the door and got on the bike. As soon as he started pedaling, he put a stupid smile on his face. After a week, I finally got an order done. I'm sure the president will be very happy. Issei would think with great joy, while she was going at great speed on her bicycle through the streets. You're lucky that person only called you to read and discuss those weird comics. Otherwise, your account would still be zero. He would declare a voice in Issei's mind, with a bit of grace in his last words. At this, Issei would frown. Hey, don't be like that. It was just a joke. Issei looked down as he thought carefully. It's not that. Are you thinking about those two girls again? Diedrag's voice would sound much more serious. Issei would get serious, while pedaling even faster. That's right. It's been a week and I didn't get any information from the blonde girl. It makes me quite angry, because she seemed like a good person, and it's more than obvious that Yuma must not have anything good planned for her. I just hope she's alright. He would finally lower his head in regret, making Diedrag a little surprised. It's quite curious to see how a demon cares for a nun, since they are natural enemies. Probably, if you ask that Grimori to go rescue her, she'll want to stick a stick up your ass to make you think. Pipe quote. Issei trembled in fear at Diedrag's last words. That's why I haven't told him anything. I also know that going to church alone would be suicidal. It's true that I can control my boosted gear a bit already, but I still have a long way to go to defeat three fallen angels. Also. We're not sure there are only three. Pipe quote. Issei rubbed at his hair in great frustration. Don't say it. She would think internally, then give a tired sigh and look seriously ahead. I guess I'll let it go, because there's nothing he can do. Line jump. Good job. Rias would congratulate with a big smile on his face, seeing that Issei had successfully completed his first assignment as a devil. It was nothing. Issei would rub his hair with a nervous smile on his face. Rias would sit on top of her desk, while holding a slightly mischievous smile on her face. Well, I told you earlier that I would give you a reward when you successfully complete your first assignment, what do you want? Rias had studied Issei this week, and she knew very well that her two best friends were total perverts. When she saw that her friends behaved that way, he supposed that Issei was not very different from her, but the brown-haired man surprised her when he saw that she hardly even flinched with obscene thoughts. Obviously, she had noticed that for every meeting at the club, Issei would get a bit of an idiot look for a small second when she looked at Akino's body or hers. Perhaps, unlike her two friends of hers, he only affected the bodies that are very well endowed with her. She obviously didn't know that if it wasn't for Diedrag, Issei might be even worse than her two best friends. Basically, Rias had no idea that Diedrag could suppress a large part of Issei's inordinate sexual urges, besides demonic corruption and that every day, thanks to the willpower of the protagonist, those extreme sexual appetites were disappearing more and more. Issei looked seriously at Rias, making her shocked by his face. I want you to give me the day off tomorrow. It's Sunday, and since I'm not going to the academy, it's a perfect opportunity to train all day and increase my power. All right, Rias would answer with clear confusion in his words. For the short time he had to know him, he thought he was one of those closet perverts and was going to ask to touch his breasts, but he was quite surprised. By his response, Issei would clench his fists tightly with a smile. Good. Did you hear that, Diedrake? Loud and clear, partner. This is a great opportunity to awaken your boosted gear to the second level. That sounds great. See you Monday, President. Issei would scream loudly, saying goodbye to her boss and leaving the place like a rocket. Yeah. See you at the academy, Rias would say out of nowhere, as she raised her hand a little with a frozen expression on her face. I guess decimating him sexually won't be an option. Oh at least, not for now. I should wait and see how he plays out in the future. Line jump. Phew. I need to take a break. Issei would wipe the sweat from his forehead, as he breathed heavily. The chestnut-haired man was exercising in the same park as always. It was 5 in the afternoon and I had already spent a lot of hours training, so it was time for a break. 
Issei opened his suitcase and took out a sandwich along with a bottle of water, while he sat on a bench in the park to take a break. She looked around her with a small smile as she saw how the children had fun playing the different games, how people enjoyed a hamburger at the local restaurant. It was honestly a pretty relaxing environment. It was something that helped him get a little distracted from what the world really was. Read your destiny. Discover your good or bad destiny through numbers. Discover your lucky number. Issei would look with some interest at the bald old man who was passing right in front of him with some kind of cart that was made of wood. One part had a ripple that carried a large number of coins and bills, while in the center it had two small boxes that said, good luck, and bad luck, respectively. Issei would get up from his seat with a smile and raise his hand to the old man, who would stop his cart with a smile upon seeing a new customer. Are you seriously going to buy one of those stupid things? Deidre would ask with a disapproving tone. This will help me clear my mind a bit. Honestly, I couldn't help but think that I have helped almost nothing in the capture of the two wandering demons that happened a few days ago. Issei would think, making Deidre understand the frustration that his bearer was going through right now. He was probably seeing himself as useless right now. Hello young man, do you want to see your lucky number, your bad luck number, or both? It costs 1000 yen each. The bald old man would ask with a friendly smile on his face. Issei would wince a little internally at the price. He wanted to buy both, but it wouldn't be good for his allowance. I'd like to know my lucky number. She would declare the brown head with a friendly smile. The old man would gladly nod as he received the money from Issei and placed it in the car, to later stick his hand into one of the boxes and close his eyes tightly. Hum. Deidre thought to himself as he noticed something strange coming from the old man. Here it is, the old man would say, taking a small piece of paper out of the box, to then hand it over to Issei. Issei received the paper with a slight grateful nod, then turned it over and verified the number. 25. Issei would say while rubbing his hair in some confusion. Noticing the boy's confusion, the old man smiled and proceeded to explain what that number meant. 25 is your lucky number. Without a doubt, that number will mean something very important to you in the future. It can be a date, a count, a raffle number, oh anything else that has to do with numbers. Oh, I get it. Thank you very much. Issei would dismiss the old man with a small bow. The old man would do the same with a mysterious smile on his face, before continuing on his way. Issei would sit on the bench again, while taking his food again and continuing to eat it with pleasure. He put the small piece of paper in his pocket without paying much attention to what the old soothsayer had mentioned. Hola. Issei opened his eyes a bit confused by the familiar voice, to later widen them and begin to cough in an exaggerated way due to his choking. Oh, sorry. I really didn't mean to. Issei would drink a large amount of water and put his bottle aside, to see the young woman who was standing in front of him, a huge smile between her teeth. Hi, I'm glad you're okay. She would say Issei to the blonde-haired girl, while she gave her a big hug, making the young woman blush slightly. But he returned her hug anyway. Nice to see you again, um. Issei would break away from the hug with a smile. Issei. Issei Hiodo. My pleasure. Issei would bow her hand, causing the nun to shake it with a smile. Asia Argento. It's also my pleasure. She would say the nun with a beautiful smile, making Issei a little flustered by her naive beauty. Issei would quickly put his hands in his pockets, after remembering a very important fact. Asia just looked at him a bit confused by his quick change of attitude. Something happens, asked the blonde, somewhat worried by Issei's expression. Nothing. It's just, you know. The fallen angels already told you that I'm a demon and I really don't care that you are a devil. I can see that you are a very good person, and for that reason I came to this park once again hoping to find you. Asia would lower her head somewhat embarrassed. Since you had to leave so quickly last time, we didn't have time to get to know each other. Issei would smile seeing that Asia didn't have any prejudice towards him. This really made him happy. Issei would take Asia's arm making the blonde-haired girl shocked by the sudden action. Do you want to have some fun? I'm sure it wouldn't be fun to spend so much time in an abandoned church. As friends, Asia would ask with a gleam of happiness in her eyes. Issei looked at her a bit puzzled by her attitude. That's right, as friends. Issei's words made Asia give him a big hug, 
surprising and blushing the brown haired by such a sudden action. Issei quickly answered the hug, somewhat nervous due to getting too close to a woman. Oh at least, this was excessive for him, since he had never been in contact with a woman for so long, except for his mother. But obviously, he doesn't even remember that anymore because he was a baby, after all. W is something wrong, Issei would ask with a clearly nervous tone. I'm very happy. At that statement, Issei would be confused. I'm really happy. I've never had a friend before. At Asia's response, Issei gave a small empathetic smile and hugged her even tighter. She was definitely going to ask him how her story was during her meeting. Line jump. Issei and Asia had a really good time for a few hours. First they went to eat at the restaurant in the park, then they took a little walk around the place. The brown-haired man bought her some gifts and she got different trophies from the machine, making Asia very happy at that time. They were both having a great time for three hours, but it was time for the party to end. Asia and Issei were sitting on a bench in the center of the park, admiring a beautiful fountain that was there. Issei was eating ice cream very happily just like Asia, until the blonde-haired girl got a little alarmed and looked at her watch. I'm sorry I have to go. Asia would quickly get up from the bench, and make a small bow to Issei, showing her appreciation. Oh no problem. Issei would say a bit curious. That was too sudden. Issei would think with a rather doubtful tone, but he would let it go. Asia would give him a sweet smile in parting. Thank you very much for today. I really had a great time. Asia would lower her head a bit, making Issei a bit confused. It was really nice to have had the chance to spend time with a friend. I'm really grateful. Asia would curtsy again, making Issei a little nervous about her condescending attitude. You don't need to do that. After all, I had a pretty good time too. Thanks to you, I was able to take my mind off my troubles for a bit. Asia would look up with a smile and raise her hand in farewell. Issei would do the same as he watched her go. Issei's smile faded into a serious look when Asia was out of sight. Are you worried about her, mate? Diedrag's voice would resonate inside Issei's mind, making the protagonist make a small grimace. Something stinks. That parting sounded like I'd never see her again. Issei would think, while she got up from the seat and looked at nothing. I don't think they'll hurt her. I mean, I don't get to witness anything coming from her. That means she's really nothing special, oh right now she's too weak to get any good potential out of her. I doubt the fallen angels want her for anything other than a fallen angel reincarnation. And if everything turns out as I have planned, there won't be a notable difference in his personality, since a fallen angel reincarnation can't corrupt you like a demonic reincarnation would. Diedre would give his point of view on the situation. Issei would soften his gaze upon hearing Diedre. If you say so, I suppose it will be so. Issei would think with a bit of pity, and then start jogging towards his home. Well, if I think about it, it's better that he become a fallen angel than die. Maybe I should stop thinking about it. Issei would finally think, a calm, centered expression on her face. Diedre would hang up and frown. However, it wouldn't be the first time I've made a mistake. I just hope the brat forgets all this and starts to focus 100% on training him, otherwise he won't last even 5 seconds against Hakuryuko. He would think the great Welsh dragon, then sigh. I only hope that our fated meeting is a long time away, because my bearer has a long way to go. Perhaps he can turn out to be the weakest of all the existing Sekiryote so far. I will have to pray that the case of Albion is exactly the same, otherwise we won't have a chance. Finally, Diedre would say with a disgusted expression. Honestly, he would have told Issei that he had the reputation of being the worst carrier yet. Line jump. Issei would be walking out of Kuo Academy with a vacant look in his eyes, as he saw how Kiba was once again surrounded by women asking for his attention. I don't know why, but with each passing day, I feel more like kicking your ass. Issei would think, while she watched the scene with great jealousy. Issei woke up from his little vengeful world when he looked around and realized that Matsuda and Motohama weren't with him. Issei rubbed his cheek with his index finger, clearly confused. Now that I think about it, they weren't with me at recess either. Where the hell have they been? Issei put his thoughts aside as he heard a large amount of threatening female screams coming from his right. Issei rolled his eyes as he saw Matsuda and Motohama running at great speed in great fear, 
while an angry mob of women with wooden swords was chasing them. Hey look, there's eyes. Matsuda would yell with all his energy. Human shield in sight, Motohama would declare, making Issei visibly twitch at what he heard. Before he could do anything, both Matsuda and Motohama got behind Issei and pushed him towards the enraged women. The girls from the kendo club had the decency to catch him before he fell to the ground. Hey, the problem isn't with you, so back off now oh. Issei raised both hands in a defensive gesture, making the women look at him carefully. Wow, wow, wow. Can you tell me what the hell is going on, Murayama, Kates? The two women in front of the mob looked at their classmate with an air of annoyance, making Issei feel a little intimidated. These two perverted assholes were peeking in our locker room. Both women would declare with great fury in their words. Issei rolled his eyes at his friends, to then look at the angry mob again. Okay. I understand. But I don't think that's the way to settle such a superficial conflict. Superficial. All the women would scream with great anger. At this, Issei felt that she was greatly diminished in front of the enraged women. Me and Murayama already know that you are friends with the pervert duo, are you also like them? Kates would ask with great indignation at his words. Issei would again wave his hands in defense. No, no, no. I'm just saying that it's a bad idea to resort to violence for once they've spied on them. Obviously, I don't agree with them and it seems right to me that if they are caught spying once more they can punish them without problem. Issei would make the point of him with a big nervous smile on his face. All the women would look at each other for a few seconds, then nod. Okay. But if we find them spying on us again, we'll kill them. Murayama would declare with great hatred in his words. This caused Issei and his friends to sweat nervously. Finally, the group of women dispersed and Issei's best friends went to thank him for his help. I knew we could count on your support. Motohama would say, while he placed a hand on his shoulder. You're amazing, Issei. Matsuda would say very seriously, as he placed a hand on Issei's remaining shoulder. Well, they wanted to use me as a human shield. Issei would say with his eyes rolled back. Matsuda would give Issei a slight push, making him look somewhat confused by his action. Let's just say it was our little payback for you joining a club full of beauties without letting us know. Matsuda would say with an expression of feigned pain. Same here. That was very wrong of you. Motohama would say, as she adjusted her glasses with a very serious look on her face. Oh, speaking of which, I have to go now. I have some chores to do at the club. See you later. Issei would say, while she ran off to the occult club. Motohama would deny disapprovingly. Anyway, I wouldn't join a beauty club if I had to be at your feet with so many odd jobs. At what point would I get to see your breasts? Matsuda would nod vigorously, indicating that he agreed with his friend. Line jump. Issei would enter the occult club, to see that Akino and Rias were playing a game of chess. The chestnut-haired man introduced himself quickly, being answered by the two women. Rias got up from her seat, and handed a pamphlet to Issei. Only one, asked the somewhat curious chestnut. Akino, Kiba and Kaneko have already taken care of everyone else. This was the only one left. I hope that with your previous experience you can complete this task successfully. Issei just nodded with a smile and grabbed the pamphlet gladly. See you in a bit, President, Akino. Issei would give them a thumbs up, making both women smile her typical smiles at him. When he finally left, Rias sat back down and studied her next move. Do you think he will be able to complete it? Akino would ask with a calm smile. I don't know. I hope he does, because at the moment he isn't contributing much. It's incredible to think that Hyodo is the Sekiryote and is so weak. Rias would make a move that would kill the queen with a pawn. Even so, he has incredible potential. We are talking about the Sekiryote, after all. Rias would clarify with a pleased smile at having such a potentially strong minion. Akino could only say her, era era, when she saw in surprise how Rias had killed her queen. Line jump. This is the place. Issei would wonder, as she looked at the house and the pamphlet. Issei got off the bike and knocked on the door. The chestnut-haired man stood still for several seconds without receiving an answer, so he knocked on the door again, making it open a little. It's open. Issei wondered quite confused, before taking off his shoes and going into the house. Hello. 
Issei went a little into the house and closed the door while looking at different places, everything being a bit dark. I'm not a thief. The door was open so. Yuck. Issei would hold his nose in great disgust. Where the fuck is that smell coming from? He thought the brown head with great disgust, as he advanced into the living room. P.L.U.F. Issei looked down a bit confused when he felt that he had stepped on something wet. He quickly regretted it and his face began to turn purple, while he covered his mouth in shock. What the hell? This is blood, and in liters. She would think the chestnut-haired man in alarm, while he watched the entire floor covered in blood. Ah, Issei would quickly be alarmed by the scream and would run at full speed in her direction. He finally walked through a door and saw a familiar person covering his mouth in shock at what he was seeing. Asia. Issei would wonder with great surprise. Why are you yelling? You idiot brat. Don't you realize that this jerk asked for the help of a demon? Issei could see how a man appeared from the shadows and menacingly approached Asia. But killing him is not the solution. She would scream Asia in great terror as she looked at the man's mutilated body. The guy grabbed Asia's neck and pushed her hard against a wall, doing a bit of damage to her in the process. I don't give a shit what you say. I'm the great freed Selzen and you'll have to respect my methods. Oh better yet, I'll make sure it looks good on your body, you fucking fucking nun. After those last words, Freed looked at Asia in a completely lunatic way and ripped off a large part of her dress, causing the blonde-haired girl to scream in fright. Hi, Issei would yell, appearing from the shadows as she trembled slightly in anger. Freed would look at Issei with a psychotic look, to then let go of Asia and get a little closer to the brown-haired man. Oh, oh, oh. Look what we have here, a fucking demon. Do not hurt him. She would scream Asia, clinging tightly to Freed. The white-haired man looked at her with hate and gave her a strong elbow in the stomach that sent her to the ground. Do not say stupid things. Issei would clench his teeth at the sight and activate his boosted gear, while clenching the gauntlet tightly. The green orb would start blinking for seconds while the word, boost, was heard. Freed looked at Issei somewhat confused, before returning to his psycho smile and pulling out a sword, along with a gun. If you want a fight, I'll be happy to give it to you, you fucking demon. Freed would say, making a small bow. Boost. I will accompany. Issei would clench his fist tightly while looking at Freed very seriously. I know Diedrake. I can't get past 12 boosto I'm screwed. Issei would think, thanking his partner for his concern. Diedrake would smile internally. You'll still have no problem with 12 mags. If he's alone, he'll be an easy win. Pipe quote. Issei would just smile making Freed look at him with some intrigue while still holding his psycho smile. Are you smiling because you're going to die? Let me exorcise you so you won't have the shame of being a filthy demon any longer. Freed would lunge at Issei, but the brown-haired man would easily dodge him, making the white-haired man slightly surprised. Freed again tried to give him another thrust. Seeing that the movement was much faster, Issei blocked the cut with his gauntlet, to then hit him hard in the stomach with his other hand that sent him flying and crashing into a closet, breaking it on the spot. Freed got up quickly, while wiping a small trickle of blood that came out of his mouth. My, my, the fucking demon is stronger than I thought. Freed widened his eyes mischievously and pointed his gun at Issei. Then, Freed's pistol would fire a white shot, making Issei a bit surprised, but he still managed to block it with his gauntlet without much difficulty. Issei was surprised when he lowered his gauntlet and Freed had his sword inches from his neck. The chestnut-haired man jerked his head away from him just in time and the sword grazed his neck. Issei's eyes widened at the opportunity and he wasted no time, kneeing Freed hard that nearly made him vomit blood, then punching him right on the cheek and pulling out his pistol with the other. Finally, he gave him a hard kick to the face that sent him crashing into the wall, rendering him half-conscious. Good. Issei would think with a defiant smile, while she tightly squeezed her gauntlet. Good job mate. For your first one-on-one -on -one battle, it went pretty well. Pipe quote. Before Issei could answer Diedrake, the brown-haired man quickly turned around defensively, after hearing someone. Hyodo, is everything under control? Kiba would ask with a smile, as he was followed by Kaneko. The Alvina looked at the sight shattered with a completely stoic expression. Great. More fucking demons. Freed would grumble under his breath, while he tried to get up in vain, 
since he fell to the ground again while his face was quite bloody. I can't believe that idiot left me like that with only four hits. The white-haired man would think with great disgust. His disgusted face would change into a psycho smile as the sky was dyed with a purple aura. Apparently, my friends have arrived, the fallen angels. He would chant in a tone to cough up blood at the end. He would look at Asia with great contempt. None, what the fuck are you waiting for? Come here and heal me now. I want to make sure I tear even one fucking demon apart. Asia would quickly listen to him and come over to heal him. The blonde would look at Issei with a sad smile. Thank you for worrying, Issei. But you don't need to help me anymore. My suffering will end tonight and I will serve God, as I always wanted to. Asia would begin to heal the white-haired boy with a sacred gear that gave off a green color. Kiba and Kaneko focused on the blonde's sacred gear, and looked at each other. They were thinking the same thing, apparently. Kiba stepped forward and grabbed Issei's shoulder tightly. I'm sorry, Hyodo, but we have to go. I guess there will be a large number of fallen angels and it's impossible that without the president's help we can defeat them. But Asia, Issei would say clenching his fists tightly. Kaneko approached Issei and squeezed his waist tightly so he couldn't move, causing the brown-haired man to be surprised. A Grimori family magic circle appeared at the feet of the three of them. She can't come with us. She's not a demon, Kaneko would say with her typical emotionless expression, causing Issei to start struggling very hard to try to go with Asia. Kaneko's eyes widened slightly at him as he found himself using more force than he thought to stop Issei's advance. Asia. Asia would smile at Issei, while tears began to fall from her face. Issei could only helplessly extend his arm towards the blonde to see how he disappeared from the place with a red flash and returned to the occult club. Finally, the magic circle disappeared and Kaneko released. It. Issei fell to his knees as she had a completely cold look on her face. Kiba and Kaneko looked at each other, worried about the stupidity that was going through Issei's mind right now. Issei remained on the floor with an overwhelming silence in the room. The only thing that could be heard was the bathtub being turned on, along with the voices of Akino and Rias in the background. Just as the bathtub stopped being heard, Issei hit the floor hard and stood up, starting to walk towards the exit with shadowed eyes. Kiba would take a step forward, worried about how his partner was doing. Hyodo, it's not good what you think. The president will punish you if you try to go there. Issei would stop dead before closing the door to look at Kiba out of the corner of his eye. Even Kaneko was surprised to see the hideous expression that Issei gave off. I'm fed up. If I don't help her, who else will? I'd rather die with a clear conscience than continue living knowing that I abandoned a friend. Issei would slowly close the door, making Kiba and Kaneko look at each other seriously. Hey guys, did something happen to make you here at this hour? Rias asked coming out of the bathroom with only a towel, just like Akino. President, it's Hyodo. He's planning to save that nun he came across a week ago. Apparently, he's not willing to listen to us. At Kiba's seriousness and words, Rias and Akino frowned in great disagreement. Finally, Rias would give a smile. In that case, I'll have to give him a good lesson so he understands not to meddle in matters that don't concern him. Kiba and Kaneko looked at each other seriously, then nodded. The nun had a very rare sacred gear. It could heal superficial and medium damage wounds at a good speed. Kaneko would say with an unusually serious expression. Rias would look at her somewhat surprised by the information. She's a nun, so you could reincarnate her as a devil and that way you'd get a powerful bishop, along with a very rare sacred gear. You'll just have to wait for the right moment. Kiba would explain with a smile. Rias looked at Kiba while crossing her arms with a pleased smile on her face. Apparently, it didn't take you long to choose, did it, President? Akino would ask with a somewhat strange laugh at the end. End of chapter. Chapter 3. The Salvation of Asia, Oh Her Perdition. Caught in the family kingdom. Issei would be walking in the middle of a wooded area to reach his destination. Church. The brown-haired man had his gaze shadowed, while the gem on his gauntlet glowed every so often. Partner. Try to control your emotions. It's dangerous to use so many boosts. It's useless to increase his strength so much if you reach overboost. Diedrag had a worried tone in his words. Issei looked up with a completely composed expression on his face. 
She let go of her tight grip on the gauntlet and stopped from her to see that she is relatively close to the church. Calm down. Diedrich. I'm fine. I just want to go in with all my power and try to blow them all up without them noticing I'm there. Sorry to disappoint you, boy. But we're not such idiots not to patrol the area when we're about to do something very important. Aise would get a little twitchy when he saw three fallen angels appear among the trees. Two of them were already known to him. I would appreciate it if you would turn around and leave the place. We don't want to get in trouble with the Grimori family, but for that reason we won't allow you to upset Rainer's plans. He would clarify the fallen angel known as Donesik. Ise raised his gauntlet while giving them a piercing look. Why are you doing this to Asia? All she wanted was to serve God and have friends. The three fallen angels would look at each other and smirk. I can see that you have become much stronger than in our first meeting. But you still have a long way to go before you can beat one of us. So what makes you think you can take the three of us together? Kala Warner would ask, a clear air of superiority in his words. Issei just gritted his teeth as a boost could be heard. He might be a fool, but not even a mental moron would answer that he could handle all three without problems. The only thing that pushed him to battle, was Asia. After all, he said to himself. He could never forgive himself if he didn't do something about it. Are you still here? Apparently you want to die, don't you? The blonde fallen angel would speak with a slightly macabre smile on her features, although she didn't look very good with how small her body was. I never mentioned that it would be 3 bs one A muffled and listless voice would sound from behind the fallen angels, causing them to turn around with a raised eyebrow. Issei recognized that voice immediately, so he was slightly surprised. What's more, I never mentioned that he was going to fight you. A clearly masculine voice would sound, so that four figures very familiar to Issei would then appear. Chairwoman. Issei exclaimed with great surprise upon seeing the entire Grimori entourage. Rias gave her pawn a gentle smile. Issei. You can continue on your way with Kiba and Kaneko. Akino and I will take care of this problem. At the president's statement, Akino licked one of her fingers with a sadistic and seductive expression, making Issei blush a little. But thanks to her recent hormone check, she brushed it off almost instantly. Okay. President. Thank you very much. Rias just nodded with a confident smile, as Issei ran past him and his two companions followed shortly after, first giving a satisfying nod to his mistress. Well, this will be quite an easy job. The blonde girl would exclaim, totally confident in her victory. Don't get too confident, Mittelt. Remember that we are talking about the Grimori family, and their power of destruction can be devastating. Kala Warner would warn with a slight frown. Donesik would laugh out loud. I don't care if that brat is from the Grimori family, oh from some high-ranking family. He would say the latter with a clear sarcastic and mocking tone. Before adjusting his hat with a smirk. We are three and they are two. Besides that she is just a brat. She must not even have awakened the power of destruction yet. We'll see about that, Rias would say with a confident smile, before looking at Akino. The woman just laughed in a somewhat strange way and leered at her opponents while raising her hand. A large bolt of lightning began to form across her palm. At the sight, the three fallen angels widened their eyes slightly in shock. Line jump. Issei stormed into the doors of the church, giving it a big kick and sending them flying. Kiba and Kaneko followed behind him, keeping an eye out for any dangerous situation that might arise. Issei ran along with his companions as they looked in various directions, not understanding why the place was completely empty. Asia and Rainer were supposed to be here. The two of them, and also. Hey, hey, hey. Look who we have here. The three companions stopped dead when they saw how Freed appeared behind a wall while he gave them his distinguished psychopathic smile. I still have to pay you back for what you did to me last time, you fucking demon. Freed would say, while he licked the tip of his sword in a gloomy way. Where is Asia? Freed was a bit surprised by Issei's question, because he didn't seem to be paying the slightest attention to him. The white-haired boy looked back and pointed to an entrance that led downwards. Ritual is taking place down there. There are also a lot of priests, but I don't like crowds. You know he would say with his typical psychotic tone. Issei started briskly walking towards the entrance, not caring that Freed was in front of the entrance. Kiba and Kaneko watched this seriously as they prepared to battle Freed in the worst case. 
Freed raised an amused eyebrow. Are you ignoring me? Remember I owe you one for last time. This time I'll make sure to cut you into a thousand pieces, and you'll be reduced to little pieces of shit, as it should be. Tilda. Freed would say with a chanting tone at the end, while moving his tongue wildly. Freed quickly got in the middle of the path, causing Issei to clench his teeth and fists tightly. I do not have time for this. Issei yelled, lunging at a speed that Freed couldn't keep up with. A strong red light emanated from the gauntlet as Issei's fist plunged into Freed's cheek, causing the subject to cry out in pain and fly away with a spray of blood on his nose and face. Her flight ended when she crashed heavily against the benches that were in the place, becoming unconscious. Issei wasted no time and went down with his two companions, only to be shocked by the sight. Oh at least, Issei if he was shocked. There were about 40 priests in the place who seemed to be praying to Rainair, while the woman was a few stairs up, next to a cross. Worst of all, was what was hanging on that cross. Asia. Issei yelled loudly, watching helplessly as the blonde was hanging on the cross. Seeing him, Rainer gave a somewhat macabre smile as she played with the gift that Issei had given her. Oh, so you came to witness the death of the nun. In a slightly more normal moment, Issei would have asked Rainer why she was still wearing the bracelet she had given him on their date. But it was not a very, normal, situation to say. Why are you doing this to him? Issei would step forward in great anger causing the priests to stand in front of him. Rainer looked at him gracefully. Why do I do it? You know that she possesses a very strong sacred gear, right? My boss ordered me to take it to keep it, since dark but fun times will begin to arise before long. And he wants to make sure that we are at the top when it happens. Boss, what the fuck are you talking about? You know what, it doesn't matter. Issei would think as he looked at Asia with great concern. Before Issei could act, a great scream was heard from the place. Asia. Issei yelled loudly as he watched the nun scream in pain loudly. Her being surrounded by a green aura. Rainer would watch all of this in fascination. Issei tried to run again, but the priests blocked his way again. Before any of them could attack the chestnut, Kiba and Kaneko charged at the priests, swinging their swords and punching them respectively. Seeing this, the corrupted priests took several steps back, impressed at the strength Kiba and Kaneko had, creating a path for Issei. Go, Hyodo, we'll take care of it. Kiba would say with a smile. We've got your back, Hyodo. Kaneko would say with his typical apathetic tone. Issei looked at both of them while his eyes sparkled from being on the verge of tears. Okay, but when we get out of here, I want you both to call me by my name. She would loudly yell Issei as she wiped her eyes and ran hard towards where Rainer was. Kaneko and Kiba just assented to Issei's proposal and continued to battle the corrupted priests. Issei stopped dead and watched in horror as the green light began to disappear, and with it, Asia screams. It's already too late, Rainer would say, extending her hands to take a ring that glowed brightly green. The sacred gear, twilight healing, is mine. With it, I'll be invincible, Rainer would exclaim, spreading her wings and starting to laugh like crazy. Aise didn't care what the woman who deceived him said and quickly approached to release Asia, and carried her in her arms. The blonde looked at him and smiled weakly. Issei's eyes began to get teary again, but not a single tear fell. Asia, I'm so sorry. If I had arrived earlier, I. Issei lowered his head a bit and closed her eyes tightly, causing a small tear to escape from her right eye. Issei was surprised when Asia brushed away the tear, then placed her hand on Issei's cheek affectionately. I'm glad. I'm glad I had a friend, Issei. Issei would watch in shock as a tear began to run down the side of her eyes. Thank you very much, for making me feel so happy in just one day. Asia's tear fell and she closed her eyes, causing Issei to hug her tightly in great pain. In the end, I couldn't do anything. But he could still avenge her. A small violet spark stood out inside Issei's soul, causing Deidre to be alarmed by what he saw. Issei looked back with great hatred to see if Rainer was still there, but he didn't see anyone. He could only see a large number of black feathers leading to the upper floor. Sorry, Issei. We couldn't stop her at first. But she must still be on top, confident of her victory thanks to her new power. Kiba would say, a little worried by the great hatred that new friend was emanating. It was so weird, even Kaneko was surprised. 
She's not supposed to have demonic corruption, so it's not normal for a human to have so much hate. Take care of Asia. Kaneko and Kiba would look at him in surprise. But, I'll take care of it personally. Kaneko was interrupted by Issei, causing both of them to look at him even more surprised. Issei. She is a fallen angel and now possesses a sacred gear. She is much stronger than the priest you faced. Kiba would try to reason with Issei to no avail. I know. It would be the only thing he would answer as he left Asia in Kiba's hands and began to move forward with great hatred at every step he took. Rainair would be calmly waiting for Rias Grimori's arrival, since she was very confident of her new power. In fact, too trusting. It's beautiful. Rainair would say in a low voice while looking at the ring that was on her finger with admiration. His close study of the ring was interrupted when Issei appeared through the door, causing Rainair to look down on him. Oh, do you still feel like fighting? I'd rather take the Grimori with me as proof of my victory. I'm giving you a chance to save yourself from the demons, and you still want to die. Issei would lower his head a bit, not really paying attention to Rainer's words. Although he had only known her for a day, Rainer had been her girlfriend. Although she had been there for a day, he had had a really good time, huh, he had even considered stopping seeing other women having Yuma with him. After all, would he really need to see many women, if he can see the beautiful eyes of her lover every day? That's what he had thought. He just wanted to give her love, and receive that love in return. Issei really appreciated her, and now it turns out that I not only deceived him, hurt, betrayed, and killed. But he also killed someone she could call a friend of hers, even though he didn't have much time to get to know her. You were my first girlfriend. Rainair looked at her bracelet with mock tenderness. Yeah, from what I could tell, you were incredibly, new, to it. A guy who hasn't, met, a woman yet, I'll admit it was all a lot of fun. Issei would clench his fists tightly as his gaze darkened. I was going to treat you like a queen. Yes, that was very clear to me. For that very reason it was so entertaining to see your panicked face when that dream was broken. Rainair would answer with a clear mocking tone, imitating Yuma's voice. Issei clenched his fists even more, causing blood to start coming out on his left hand. I thought ours would be something special. Rainair would laugh out loud. That's right, it was something very special. I saved your gift to remember the day you died. Rainair would play with the bracelet that Issei had given her, emphasizing his words. Really, it was something special, don't you think? R-A-Y-N-A-R-E. Issei would look up from her in great anger. Don't scream my real name because you ruined the moment. Rainair would say with a psychotic grin on his face as he created a spear of light. Issei would dodge the spear of light with great difficulty, causing Rainair to laugh out loud. Looks like you'll make this a bit interesting. I like that, I won't be bored until your master arrives. Rainair would say as he created another spear of light. She just wanted to have a peaceful life. Rainair would give him a slightly disgusted look. It was funny when they talked about them, but not when she brought in that blonde girl. Do you really think she would have lived a happy life? Ending up dead is the best option. You still don't understand how the supernatural world really works, and you'll never have time to understand it. Rainair threw her spear hoping to hit Issei. The brown-haired used his gauntlet when he saw that he had no chance to dodge it. He managed to block the attack, but it seemed that the gauntlet would not hold another attack. I will avenge her. Issei would yell loudly, making Rainair laugh out loud. She was having a lot of fun with the current situation. Making fun of and making her victim suffer was something she loved, those were her sins. That was the nature of her. Avenge her. If you could do it, what good would it do you? Rainair would create another spear as she reveled in the broken expression Issei had. Taking revenge won't bring her back to life, you idiot. Those were Rainer's last words before he threw the spear at him. Everything slowed down for Issei as he looked in complete shock at Rainer's last words. It's true, what use would revenge be, if it doesn't bring her back? That didn't mean he would stop hating her or forgive her for what she did. Alone, she didn't want to stoop to Rainer's level. Asia didn't want her to be like that, and he knew that she was more than that. Diedreg watched as the small violet spark merged with Issei's soul, causing him to stand in complete shock. He would kill her anyway but not for revenge. He would do it to make sure no one else falls for the fangs of such a viper. 
If you can't give it back to me, I would think. Diedreg would feel like a lot of emotions were going through his bearer. But at first, it was just hate. Now, he wasn't sure how many emotions were involved right now. But the vast majority were not nice. If you can't give it back to me, Issei would widen his eyes as a large red glow completely surrounded him. Rainair watched in shock as the spear of light shattered into a thousand pieces upon contact with the blinding light. Dragon Booster. The stamina had undergone a small transformation, becoming larger. If you can't give it back to me, I'll make sure no one else has to go through the same thing. Rainair took a step back in complete shock upon hearing the voice of the boosted gear. A A A G G G G G H H H H H H H H H H. Boost. 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 Issei would scream loudly and lunge at Rainair at incredible speed, landing a hard blow to Rainer's stomach that made him spit out a large amount of blood. Issei spat out a small amount of blood, due to a spear of light having gone through his leg. The protagonist staggered back, causing Rainair to fall to his knees as he coughed up blood. Rainair looked up with a weak psycho smile as she began to heal. I never imagined that you had one of the thirteen Longinus. But that does not save you from the great pain that runs through your entire body when you come into contact with a spear of light. What are you taking about? Rainair would be shocked to see how Issei took off his spear as if nothing had happened and a large stream of blood came out of the hole. The only thing that hurts is the huge hole in my leg. It's exactly the same pain as when you pierced my stomach. Well, it's even a little more painful, Issei would say with a slightly gloomy smile, making Rainair terrified. But how is that possible? You're a low-class devil. You shouldn't be able to move. Rainair would widen her eyes in shock. Wait a minute. Just a little more painful. Your body is supposed to be that of a devil now. How come you only feel a little more pain than last time? That's impossible. Not that it's a negligible pain, but the desire to stop you is even greater than all the pain I'm feeling right now. Burst. Issei's gauntlet would become even larger again, now covering his fingers and forearm completely, causing a second green gem to appear on the gauntlet. Issei would take a step forward, not really caring what Rainair was babbling, causing the woman to give him a terrified look and barely get up from the ground. Rainair could only watch in shock. I release the second form and the final form of the twice critical just in seconds. What kind of devil is he? Rainair would think in alarm as he created a spear and threw it at her with all his might. Issei just continued forward and deflected the spear of light with his gauntlet as if it were a fly, causing Rainair to stare at him in complete terror. Kiba and Kaneko were about to leave with Asia's body, but they saw Issei fighting. Just as they were going to join, both of them could see Rias and Akino in one of the windows while the redhead shook her head. The two understood the message and went back to hide in the shadows, watching the fight. Rainair turned around and began to fly in terror, trying to escape. Don't think you'll escape. Rainair looked back in horror, as Issei had grabbed her foot. The problem wasn't that he had reached her, but how quickly she had. I don't get it. I should be superior to you. With my sacred gear. You are an angel, so fly. Issei would declare with contained rage at his words, directing a strong punch at him that made him spit out a large amount of blood. Rainair was thrown towards one of the windows and broke it in the process, being left outside the church. Issei wasted no time and jumped out the same window, only to find Rainair lying on the floor with a very pained face while her ring was a couple of meters away from her. Issei grabbed the ring and began to slowly move forward until he was in front of Rainair. The woman's eyes widened in terror. Rainair decided to use her last escape card. It was very low, even for her. But it was the only possible escape route. Issei's eyes widened when he saw how Rainair had transformed into a different person. Issei. Please forgive me. I swear I didn't mean to. Please give me another chance. Yuma would declare as tears began to run down her face. Rainair suddenly returned to her original form, courtesy of Issei. For he grabbed her neck tightly with one hand and slammed her head to the ground, causing Rainair to gasp in pain. Issei sat on top of her legs with a shocked look. Rainair. I really, really liked you, I really liked you. I would have done everything possible to make you the happiest woman in the world, not because you are my girlfriend, but because you were charming, shy, attractive, cheerful, you were an incredible woman, 
Issei tightened his grip on Rainer's neck even more, causing her to spit out some saliva. Issei raised her arm that had the gauntlet slowly with a clenched fist pointing at the woman's face. But that wasn't you. Boost. A treacherous tear escaped Issei as he watched as Rainer tried her best to break free of Issei's grasp as the pain was killing her. She couldn't even think rationally to create a spear. Issei's right arm reached the highest possible altitude. The protagonist looked up at the night sky with a broken smile on his face for a sweet memory. Please come out with me. I guess I'll always be a loser with women. At the very least, I know Matsuda and Motohama will always be with me on it. Boost. The sound of the boosted gear was the only thing heard for a second. After that, a terrifying female scream was heard followed by multiple crashes that resounded in a disgusting manner. Line jump. So, this is the girl. Rias would look at Asia's corpse with a smile. That's right, President. But it won't do any good to reincarnate her if she doesn't possess her sacred gear. Kiba would reply seriously, making the redhead nod with a smile. Don't you think it wasn't necessary to let her die? Considering that we could have created the magic circle in the church, we would have arrived in time, Kaneko would say as she looked at the blonde's corpse with her typical listless expression. It's something that was necessary. I knew that Issei would release a new power through his feelings because of it. Rias clarified, before giving a satisfied smile. Though I never expected that she would awaken so much power. She gave the fallen angel a complete beating. Besides that, remember that she might not have wanted to reincarnate as a demon if we rescued her. This was the most viable option. Kiba would add with her typical friendly smile. Kaneko would nod in understanding. Now, we just need to bring the sacred gear to revive it. I do not think that it's necessary. Akino would answer as he watched Issei enter through the shattered doors of the church. The queen licked her lips as she saw how Issei had his gauntlet covered in blood, along with part of her upper garment. Having heard the last words, Issei clenched the ring tightly in shock as he watched his friends. Issei would quickly look at Rias with a big hopeful smile. President, does that mean that you can reincarnate Asia if you have her sacred gear? Rias nodded with a smile while crossing her arms. That's right. Oh did you already forget how we reincarnated you? Issei clenched his fists tightly and gave a huge leap of joy. His joy quickly diminished as his vision blurred, along with a great dizziness that suddenly hit him. Partner. Deactivate the boosted gear. Congratulations on reaching the latest release of the twice critical, but you still have a long way to go before you can control it without passing out from exhaustion. Issei just nodded and immediately complied, deactivating his gauntlet. Issei. You did an amazing job. I must say, I was very impressed by your performance. I would congratulate Rias. Issei would fall on his butt to the ground from exhaustion as he gave a thumbs up to Rias, making everyone smile at how the brunette acted. Everyone thought that he would be much more down because of killing his ex-girlfriend, but he seemed to be more worried about Asia's recovery right now. In fact, it wasn't quite like that. Simply. Issei had sentenced his point of view between him and the women when the fight against Rainer ended. But he was much more wrong than he thought, and he would find out in the future. Line jump. Issei watched in astonishment as Rias's bishop entered Asia's body. As your new master, I will grant you a new life. Rias would finish his spell, making the magic circle under Asia disappear. Issei watched impatiently, waiting for Asia to wake up. Hey. Asia widened her eyes in confusion as a red glow flashed across her eyes for a second. Issei quickly rushed towards Asia and hugged her tightly as she began to cry. Asia. Thank goodness. Issei would pull away a bit suddenly. Do you recognize me? He would ask quite concerned. Issei. The now confused demon would ask. Issei hugged her tightly again, making Asia smile and hug him back. The hug lasted a few seconds, since the young woman quickly separated from Issei something that surprised the young man. Who are they? Asia would ask as she looked at the others. Rias pointed to herself with a smile. I am Rias Grimori. They are all my demon servants. I was the one who reincarnated you so that you would have a second life. You should know that I am your master from now on, and you are a devil. At that statement, Asia shook her head in confusion, but her confused expression quickly changed to disgusted. Issei felt a little bad knowing that Asia was devoted to God even though she was considered a heretic of hers for having cured a demon. She quickly tried to remedy the situation. President, 
is there a way for Asia to still be able to pray to God? At Issei's question, everyone present twitched a bit, although the chestnut didn't notice it. Well, I don't notice it for a reason. Issei, are you crazy? I will never pray to that idiot again, never. Issei would look at Asia in shock at the response so out of character that she had given. Asia looked around with clear disgust. Besides, why did they have to revive me in a church? This place is disgusting. Before Asia could say oh to do anything else, Rias quickly went over to her and tapped her on the shoulder. Okay, I'd like to give you some control classes before you continue living in the mortal world. Rias would seriously look back. We'll be at the club. I probably won't be at the academy for a couple of days. Before Issei could protest for an answer, Rias and Asia disappeared through a magic circle. Issei looked at his companions, waiting for an answer. A rather uncomfortable silence was present in the place for several seconds. It's the demonic corruption, Kiba replied, breaking the silence. Line jump. The week progressed quickly. Issei resumed his morning training without much trouble, although things got really complicated for him when it came to practicing with his boosted gear. According to Diedrag's explanation, he had evolved the boosted gear too quickly without fully mastering it, and that caused his body to deplete very quickly, and that the only way to improve that situation was with personalized training by someone who knew about sacred gear, oh that they understood how the power of dragons worked, since technically Issei's boosted gear is pure dragon power. She tried to seek help from her companions, but Rias said that he could help her in magical aspects, but not in improving her control with the sacred gear. He also tried to ask Kiba for help, but the blonde told him that when he woke up his sacred gear he had never had any problem using it. In the end, Diedrag and Issei concluded to keep improving their fitness, because that was what was stopping the improvement process right now. With the help of Rias, Issei followed a training plan throughout the entire week. Regarding Asia, Issei had hardly been able to visit her at the club these days. Although she was glad that she was okay, her change in attitude caused the brown-haired man to cool her relationship with the blonde. Now, Asia had a much more direct and fiery personality. There were even times when her attitude seemed somewhat sinister. The only sure thing for Issei was that she would never be hers before her, and that was something that bothered him a little. Finally, I come to the conclusion that she will try to convince and warn all the people who want to become devils to what they are exposing themselves to, unless there is no other alternative. If Asia had changed so drastically from such a kind-hearted and timid person, she couldn't imagine what would happen to a person with a stronger attitude. In these few days that had passed, normal, things also happened. Like Kiba's fan club, the ones marked as the, pervert duo, along with, the friend of perverts, which played negatively on Issei's reputation, but that was nothing compared to how all the women viewed Matsuda and Motohama. The only really important thing this week was that Issei found out that there was more than one heir to a great family at the school. This heir was a woman and her name was Sona Sitri. She also found out that her pawn was Saji who had recently joined her ranks, just before the start of classes. She hadn't liked the boy very much because of his cocky and stupid attitude. But he quickly assumed that the demonic corruption had corrupted his soul, so in the end he ended up pitying him. He only hoped that he would eventually learn to control her, so to speak. Line jump. Issei was leaning back on his desk with a completely bored look on his face. Right next to him, there was a backpack much larger than what would be considered normal. Hmm, Matsuda and Motohama left me again to spy on the changing rooms. Ah, I'd like to go too. Issei would think, not really giving any importance to his thoughts, since they were watching how the girls were gathered at a table and talking of the prince. All the women turned and screamed out of nowhere, causing Issei to cover his ears in annoyance. She decided to look away from her to see what she was about. Speaking of Rome, Issei would think as he watched Kiba walk in, giving him a completely emotionless look. The women started whispering among themselves when they saw that Kiba sat down right in front of Issei's bench. What's wrong, Prince Charming? Issei would ask, raising her gaze a little, with a clear mocking tone in her voice. Kiba gave him a nervous smile at his friend's attitude. The president wants to see you. At this, Issei straightened up and looked at him very carefully. Kiba looked around him and started to whisper very low. Once a month, a recognized family from hell has a chance to visit the family realm. Luckily, 
the president and Sona made an agreement that the Citri family would enter the previous month, and we would enter this month. The president will give you more details. Issei simply nodded in a somewhat absent-minded way while glancing at the girls behind, to make sure they couldn't hear their conversation. What time? She would whisper. In 25 minutes. 25. Is there a problem? No. It's just that that number rings a bell. Kiba just shook his head at his friend's ramblings and left the place. Did he say kingdom familiar? Hype quote. Issei raised an eyebrow internally upon hearing Diedrag's hesitant tone. Yeah, is there something wrong with that? He would ask himself very curiously. Something weird. No, not at all. I was just asking. I've never been to that place, but I've always heard some things. Hype quote. The fact that Diedrag tried to correct his voice made Issei realize that he was hiding something from him. But she finally brushed it off. Lately, her trust with Diedrag had increased to astronomical levels, and she knew that if the dragon didn't tell her something, it was for a reason. And many times, those reasons were personal. A clear example is when he wanted to know why Diedrag and Albion started their eternal rivalry. The dragon simply replied that some things were better without being dug up. Although he promised that he would tell her when he is much stronger. Line jump. I see. So that woman was your familiar. Issei would say while she listened attentively to the explanation of her mistress. The familiar left its female form and turned into a strange little animal with bat wings, and then landed on Rias's shoulder. They were all gathered in the occult room, where Rias had finished her explanation that she was a familiar. My idea is to take the two of you to get a familiar. Besides that, this will be a good experience for you to start relating to atypical worlds. It will be a good experience. She would say Asia with a smirk. Rias would raise her index finger with a small smile. By the way, Asia, tomorrow you will enroll in Kuo Academy. I think you are ready to enter, but be careful with your actions. I would hate to have to erase everyone's memory, because you attacked a god follower in the middle of a class. Asia would just nod with an enthusiastic smile. She was already looking forward to entering the academy ever since she had come to this place. Rias looked at her two most recent acquisitions with a smile. Okay. Do you have any last questions? Issei raised his hand, and Rias quickly gave him the floor. How different will this kingdom be? Rias gave him a sly smile. It's not something I can explain with my words. You'd better describe it with your own point of view. Issei just nodded in understanding. Rias called everyone to stand inside the magic circle, and then disappeared. Line jump. Issei and Asia looked around in slight surprise. The sky was green, they were surrounded by trees and more trees, not to mention ridiculously huge. You could also hear the noise of flowing water, hinting that there were a large number of streams in the area. To top it off, an extremely humid climate reigned in the place. It's like a forest, Issei thought looking in all directions. Omitting the fact that the trees were an ash-white color, along with leaves that seemed to be made of green tea. G U A W G O O O O O O O O O O O O O A A A R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R. The only thing that its inhabitants are not the usual animals. Issei would think with his eyes rolling. This place is quite nice. She would say Asia while looking around her with a bright smile. Oh, so we meet again, Grimori. Girl. They would all look up to see some sort of version of Ash Ketchum, but much more adult. Chairwoman. Issei would ask with a confused tone. He is the one in charge of maintaining order in this kingdom. He makes sure that the demons do not harm the small ecosystem of this place, along with maintaining order among the species that inhabit here, since some are very territorial. Rias would explain wisely. That's right, brat. This place seems endlessly sprawling, but it's much smaller than you can imagine. I need to make sure everything stays in order. Especially since there's nowhere else in hell these friends can move to if your home will be damaged. It would explain the man who was in the tree. Hell. Asia would ask in disbelief. Rias nodded with a proud smile on her face. That's right. The familiar kingdom is located in an extremely hidden place in hell. For that very reason, only high-renowned families know the location of this forest. Before they could continue their talk, a small dragon descended from the air and stared at Asia causing everyone to be surprised. But the one who was most surprised was undoubtedly the family caregiver. 
Asia just stared at him for a few seconds with a slightly surprised expression. The little dragon finally stopped studying her closely and leaned his head forward, indicating that he wanted to be petted. Asia didn't hesitate and stroked the little blue and white dragon's back, making the little one happy and start circling around her. Finally, the little dragon landed in Asia's arms with great tranquility and a small glow covered it for a few seconds, causing a small seal to appear on her abdomen. I can't believe what I'm seeing. As soon as we get here and the lady tames a sprite dragon instantly, being a breed quite well known for being considered a rather surly, territorial, and highly indomitable species. I see you have a truly extraordinary touch, young lady. The caretaker would say, with great astonishment in his tone of voice. Everyone approached Asia and started to congratulate her on her achievement, except for Issei who was freaking out over the place. Diedrag, what the hell is going on? I don't know if I'm going crazy, but I feel a lot of presences in this place. Issei widened his eyes as he couldn't and looked quickly behind him, after feeling a disturbingly strong energy, but asleep. Partner. Calm down. This is completely normal. As you are a small part dragon, you can feel the presence and power of other dragons for miles. It is an ability that only our species possesses, since others cannot sense the presence, they can only feel the expulsion of magic and power. Although we can only locate ourselves among the species. Also, it not only allows you to know their presence, but also allows you to study their state of mind. Although that is already a very advanced level that perhaps not you can reach, because you are not a 100% dragon. I would explain Diedrag very seriously. A great cold sweat would run down Issei's face. I understand, Diedrag. But, Issei would continue to stare behind him as a large icy colored aura rose from behind him. Is it normal for a dragon to possess such a stifling aura and power? Quote pipe ellipsis pipe quote. Diedrag. I'll call him Rase. Issei abandoned his concern to focus on Asia. He still hadn't congratulated her as she should. Besides, he didn't have to worry. After all, she hadn't done anything to make that dragon angry at him. True. Rase. It's a nice name. Issei would say as she approached with a friendly smile. Rase opened one of his eyes and then a large electric discharge left his body and hit Issei hard, making the brown-haired man dance in a funny way. Hey Rase. That's not done. She would say Asia, holding back her laughter. What the hell? Issei asked, already rid of the electric dance. The caretaker gave him a mocking smile. Remember what I said, those dragons are extremely territorial, and it just so happens that you are a dragon. Line jump. Kya, get it off me. Wait, let's not use magic oh all our clothes will be torn to pieces. These things are disgusting. Era era, how naughty. Issei would be turned around staring up at a tree while listening to all the party that was going on behind him. I don't have to see, I don't have to see, resist the temptation. Kiba would swing his sword hard at one of the many slimes in the room, ridding Kaneko of the hideous creatures. Issei, could you help me? Doing all this alone is a bit complicated. Issei would turn his head for a second and he could see how Rias and Akino's breasts were almost exposed. Both women jerked making their breasts bulge in a sensual way, and when we add the fact that they were covered in slime drool, it made the scene quite lewd. Can't. Issei quickly turned around and placed her hands on his face to cover her deep blush. Come on. Kiba would say with a nervous smile. He's a pervert. Kaneko would scold with a frown. Kiba continued to eliminate slimes along with Kaneko, but when the situation seemed under control, a small number of them appeared among the trees, falling on top of the women and stripping them completely naked. Kya, I thought we eliminated all of them. Kiba would ponder as he rubbed his cheek with a nervous smile. Issei was about to give in to his sexual instincts and look away, but the caretaker just appeared in front of him. Ha 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 ha. These creatures feed on clothes, especially women's clothes, so it's normal that they're attacking them like that. The man would look at Issei with a smirk. Though in general, the number of slimes reflects a man's sexual appetite, and it's more than obvious who it is. Issei removed his hands from his face in shock. Are you saying it's my fault? The caretaker would put one of his hands on top of Issei's shoulder. It's not that I'm blaming you brat. You're just unlucky to have a libido 15 times higher than normal. I hope in the future you'll be able to control it without any problem. The man would gracefully look at the women drool. Because so far, 
you haven't done a good job of hiding it, if the naughty little ones noticed your presence. The man moved away from Issei, making the brown-haired man think a little about the man's words. He finally nodded to himself decisively. He had to learn to control his voracious sexual appetite, more than anything else so as not to end the reputation of his two best friends. He knew he couldn't have any luck with any woman because of her past scars, but that didn't mean women couldn't get a good impression of him outside of the realm of love. Although at this point it is already known what Issei's greatest motivation is to stop being a perverted beast. Issei. Issei changed his determined expression to a little scared after hearing Ria's repressive tone. Assuming the girls were already dressed, Issei slowly turned his head and broke out in a profuse sweat when he saw the suffocating aura surrounding Rias. Yes, President, I understand that you can't control your sexual appetite and have attracted all those slimes accordingly. But it was too bad that you stood around doing nothing, just to see us naked. Rias would say with a frown. That was very wrong, Issei. Akino would support Rias with a seductive smile. Now my whole body feels sticky, silly. She would say Asia as she watched as she rubbed her uniform awkwardly. Pervert. Was Kaneko's simple answer. Akiba would just drop a sweat from what was happening. As your mistress, this is something I cannot forgive. If you see us in danger, any kind of danger, you should always help us. Now that was stupid, but what makes sure you don't run away when there's a really tough fight? Chairwoman. Rias waved her hand dismissively. Yes, yes, I know you would never do it, but you have to keep in mind that I need to show you my authority so that something like this doesn't happen again. Rias narrowed her eyes at the last words, making Issei swallow hard. Kiba, you're a man too, help me, Issei would say, giving him a pleading look. Kiba rubbed his hair with a nervous smile. I'm sorry, Issei, but I can't disobey the president. Issei just looked down completely dejected by his friend's response. Rias crossed her arms with great seriousness. From what I've learned about you, I know that a physical training-based punishment would only make you happier. And the action you took today isn't serious enough to get your ass whipped. President. Issei looked up with a hopeful glint in his eyes. Rias would smile quietly. So your punishment will be to stay here for three days. That. Issei yelled loudly at what he heard. A magic circle was formed under Rias's feet. The other servants of hers gathered around her, a somewhat confused look on her face. Apparently, they were not very sure of this punishment. See you on Thursday, Issei. Try not to move too much in this place, oh you might have a problem with the dragons. It's the only territory they have left after the war, and they're overly territorial for that reason. Wait a second, Issei tried to jump into the magic circle, but they all disappeared in his face. I think I prefer the whipping, he finally he would say as he looked around with some fear. Line jump. Ha 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 ha. So, only here for three days huh? That's how it is. Issei and the caretaker would find themselves eating a large amount of berries and other fruits. It was obvious to say that those kinds of fruits were not common on earth. But their taste was still the same. Thank you for giving me some food. Issei would give the man a smile to indicate his appreciation. The caretaker would give him a smirk. No problem, boy, I know you're not someone with bad intentions, just looking at you makes me realize that. Issei would open his briefcase and throw all his books and notebooks on the ground to start putting the fruits in. By the way, do you know any place where it's not dangerous to sleep? The man would look up with a pensive face. Hmm, not really. There are no places here that aren't dangerous, although there are places that are less dangerous than others. The man would look down from him with a serious expression. I recommend that you stay in these areas, since they are the least dangerous. The man watched curiously as Issei closed his suitcase and adjusted the position of the backpack they carried on their backs. By the way, what do you have in your backpack? Issei put the briefcase on his shoulder as he gave her a smile. I never go back home after the academy, so I always take a backpack with me so I have plenty of water and food. Luckily, they'll help me out a lot today. The man gave him a worried look. Don't your parents worry that you're away so long? Issei would give a mocking snort, causing the man to look at him strangely. Issei would turn around and start walking, raising his hand in greeting. I'm sure they'll be happy not to see a hair from me in three days. The man gave him a somewhat confused look, but decided not to press the subject any further, because it seemed delicate.
The man snapped his fingers with a smile. I almost forgot to tell you something. To the north of here is a cave that is quite safe. No one dares to go in there because of the freezing temperatures. Issei would slightly change his direction to head north while pointing to his giant backpack. Luckily, this morning I bought a large number of blankets. The man continued to look at Issei, until he finally disappeared into the trees. Anyway, I wonder what it is that place has to generate such a low temperature. The man would think, holding his chin. Line jump. Issei would continue advancing through the trees. He could hear the sound of a lot of water and animals to the right of him, so surely there was some kind of lake in that direction. Issei put a goof on his face. I'm lucky to have a lake nearby, along with such vegetation. This will come in handy to sustain me for three days. Issei put his serious face on again. I just hope my dragon sensor doesn't make an appearance again in these three days. I wouldn't want to have to worry about auras in the woods at nap time. Buddy, I don't think the cave is as safe as that bum told us. Issei would raise an eyebrow at Diedrag's hesitant and scared tone. Diedrag, do you have a thing with this place? Ever since we got here, you've been acting like you're afraid of something or someone. Me, scared, ha, huh? you have no idea what you're talking about, brat. Diedrag would reply with a clear tone of superiority. Issei gave a small smile as he looked at his right hand. So what is bothering you? It's nothing, mate, it's something insignificant. Don't worry. Diedrag would reply with a clear confident tone. Issei looked ahead with a smile and continued moving forward. In that case, then there's nothing to worry about. Wait, anywhere but there. Diedrag yelled with a clearly scared tone. Issei stopped short and a small tick in his eye showed the annoyance he was having right now. You know, if you're not going to tell me why I shouldn't move towards the cave, stop picking me up and shut up. Issei frowned and continued advancing faster. Okay. If you don't want to tell me, that's your problem. Issei kept advancing for a few more minutes, until he finally went through a tree and watched with great astonishment as the cave loomed about 40 meters from him, showing that the surrounding vegetation had been completely crushed by the climate of the place. The cave had a large hole and everything around it was adorned with ice. Before Issei could step onto the ice, Diedrag finally spoke. It's something from my past, for that very reason I don't want you to go there. Please listen to me, partner. My carriers usually die from the battle against Albion for the most part, but they also die from two other factors. One is by the Dragon Slayer, and the other one is in this cave. This misfortune is something that has haunted me since the beginning of my battle against Albion. I don't like to remember and talk about my past, but I wouldn't want you to die, being the best carrier that has treated me in this millennium. Everyone has treated me as a source of power but you are the first to treat me as their partner. So please, I promise I will tell you everything, but I beg you for a little more time, since they are hard memories for me, because they are things that will never come back. Diedrag's genuinely sincere and concerned tone made Issei give a very pleased smile at his response. Okay, mate, I understand that your memories of when you were still alive are harsh, but I just want there to be true trust between us. After all, we could live many millennia together. You're right. Thanks for not pushing me, mate. Diedrag would appreciate it with a clear grateful tone to his words. Now let's get out of here. Issei would lower his raised foot, stepping on the edge of the ice. The brunette watched slightly surprised as the ice moved away from her foot by magic. Inside the cave, giant eyes of a deep sky blue color would snap open. Shit. Issei was abruptly dragged into the ice sector by a huge icy dome that surrounded the entire surrounding area, getting trapped inside the place. But what kind of sorcery is this? Issei would scream in shock, seeing the huge dome that was surrounding him. Issei would quickly pull out his gauntlet and deliver a heavy blow to the column of ice, without scratching it. What is this shit? Issei would wonder with narrowed eyes as she began to shiver from the cold. We're lost. We went too deep and she noticed us. Diedrag replied with a very serious tone. Issei blinked twice in surprise. She. The last factor that doomed my wielders is a dragon named Tiamat. She is completely insane. There is no use staying here, if you don't go, she will come for us. Wait, what did you do to make him hate you so much? Issei put on a bored look. More personal issues, I guess I'll ask her. 
you'll be very lucky if he lets you say more than two words that aren't part of your introduction. It was an honor to have been your partner for over two weeks. Hey, don't give me up for dead yet. Issei would say with a tick in her eye. He didn't understand why he had to deal with his personal problems, but if he died from this stupidity, his soul would enter the sacred gear just to kick his ass. Line jump. Issei would enter the cave, where he could only see darkness. He continued advancing a little recklessly through the cave, until he ran into a current of air that seemed to be a breath. Issei took a huge leap back as huge beautiful eyes of a deep light blue color opened before him. I never thought you would willingly come to your death, Diedrake. He would say the figure as it stood up and spread its wings, having such a gigantic size that it encompassed the entire cave. Issei would be much more scared right now, if it weren't for the melodious and beautiful voice that came from a huge dragon omitting the fact that the tone described his hatred. The dragon's first word sent a slight chill down his spine. After a few seconds, Issei watched in amazement as the entire cave lit up thanks to the ice that adorned it. He was further astonished when he saw the huge 9-meter dragon in front of him. His scales were completely white, except for his abdomen and wings that were light blue, almost as strong and deep as his eyes. Then I hope you're prepared for your death, Diedrake. And if you're not, it's not my problem. The dragon's clearly annoyed tone made Issei snap out of her astonishment. Issei waved his hands in defense with some fear. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not Diedrake, I'm the bearer of it. Tiamat narrowed her eyes, making Issei even more nervous. That's right. Now that idiot is a mere sacred gear, but they are the same scum. After all, you are the Sekariote. Said the dragon with a clear mocking tone at the end. Scum. What am I missing? The chestnut thought. Don't call me that. My name is Issei, not Sekariote. That's just a silly honorary title they give me for having Diedrake. Tiamat's eyes flashed with intrigue for a second. How curious. All the previous wielders of killed rejoiced at his title like morons. Seeing that the dragon had some interest in a chat, Issei didn't miss the opportunity and pointed a finger at her. Besides, I don't know what Diedrake did to you for you to call him scum, but I had nothing to do with her problems. Tiamat glared at him, hinting that she had touched a very sensitive spot. So that idiot only rejoices in stories where he achieved great achievements, huh? In fact, he didn't even tell me anything about his life. But I'm not going to answer so as not to lose the opportunity to get out alive. Issei would think as sweat began to break out from her face, indicating that her superficial calm was slowly beginning to give way. Tiamat brought her face threateningly closer to Issei's, making the brunette a little scared. Not because of her closeness, but because of the pain and hatred in his eyes. I was completely in love with a dragon, along with two other females. In our species, it's normal to see males practice polygamy, so I didn't mind sharing it. But soon after, I found out that he only wanted the other two. And he only saw me as a trophy because of my position. That caused me to fall into the fall of the dragon, a lethal disease that consumes you in a single week, and the only thing it needs to sprout in your body is that your lover betrayed you. It's an almost incurable disease, but if you get over it, you'll never have to go through it again. Obviously. I wasn't emotionally strong enough to get over it myself, but this is where Diedreg comes in. He took care of me for whole days to make sure I was okay. Oh as I was healing, I just couldn't help but fall in love with him, and I felt like our connection was very special. But when he finally healed me, he abandoned me. I was tracking him for a whole week, until I finally found him. Tiamat's eyes grew a little teary. In the arms of another. And again, I was rejected. Until I finally found it, Tiamat's eyes grew a little teary. In the arms of another. And again, I was rejected. Until I finally found it, Tiamat's eyes grew a little teary. In the arms of another. And again, I was rejected. In these moments, Issei's fear had dissipated, to become empathy. In fact, she felt great pity for Tiamat, because he had experienced something similar firsthand, referring to the first part of the story. Tiamat turned her face away from Issei and her tears crystallized and broke, so that later she gave off an aura of death around her. For that very reason, I swore to take revenge. I took revenge on my former lover, and took possession of this cave in the last millennium, only to leave when I felt Diedrake's presence, only to go and kill him. Tiamat just waited for Issei's response to kill him. 
he just waited for him to answer like everyone else. You're crazy. You are crazy. Because you are that way, no one will ever love or want you. Don't you feel alone? Tiamat changed her angry expression to a very confused one. That. Issei rubbed his cheek with a nervous smile. I'm just saying. You know. If you wait here for that long to kill Diedrake, that means you haven't talked to almost anyone in a millennium. Tiamat looked at Issei in great surprise. Well. I guess so. But I've never really thought about it. I only had one goal in mind. Issei stopped rubbing his cheek and looked down with a slightly downcast expression. I know what you've been through can be very hard, but it's always good to try to get over it. And talking to people can help you. You know. Don't make me laugh. Don't try to feel sorry for me, when you have no idea what it feels like. Tiamat roared with great rage at his words. Why do you think I'm a devil? Don't make hasty statements. Tiamat was surprised again when Issei looked up with great seriousness, besides that he had yelled at her. How long had it been since someone had yelled at him? Actually, had anyone even yelled at him? That wasn't really what was on her mind right now. The only thing she was thinking about was Issei's penetrating gaze. Without a doubt, the boy had gone through an experience similar to hers. That means he understands your pain. Don't compare one thing to the other, mate. Your experience was much worse than that dragon's. Tiamat's scales bristled, indicating that she did not want to hear that voice at all. How dare you! How dare you! The dragon roared loudly, causing Issei to be dragged a few meters. Issei rubbed his hand with his face internally. Right now, he was very angry with Diedrake. Just when he had a chance to live, it was ruined by his own partner. A large amount of power that materialized as ice began to surround her, giving her a very imposing and threatening image. But Issei had his head elsewhere at the moment. Why are you angry? You don't know what my asterisk lived through. Issei was so angry, he didn't even think about his words. They just came out of it. They came out of his soul. Shut the fucking mouth you damn underdeveloped lizard. The stifling atmosphere that Tiamat produced disappeared instantly making everything go completely silent as the dragon's eyes went as wide as they could be. Hey. I'm defending you. Watch your approach, brat. Diedrake whispered under his breath with a very offended tone. Obviously, his whisper was of little use, since everything was completely silent. Issei just stood there looking at Tiamat. A small icy stream was the only thing heard in the agonizing silent seconds. After that, Tiamat's expression of complete surprise began to slowly soften. In fact, it looked like he was starting to smile. Hum hum hum. Ha ha ha. H a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a. Tiamat flipped over on the ground as he laughed nonstop and grabbed his stomach with his four paws. Tiamat began to hit the ground heavily, causing the entire place to rumble. L a l a g a r undeveloped lizard. H a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a. Issei couldn't stay surprised by Tiamat's reaction for long, because her voice and laugh were so beautiful when she wasn't threatening you with death, that it was simply very easy to get carried away by her. For that reason, he also began to laugh along with her. I don't like where all this can lead to. Diedrake would say, very offended by what was happening. End of chapter. Thanks for watching please like share and subscribe for more next part coming soon.